Okay, next question. What are good questions to get to know someone's true self without bluntly asking that? Ah. The second, the question after this is how to know if a guy wants more than sex or how to know if a guy just wants more than sex or how to know if a guy wants just sex. <laughs> We're not really sure what was meant by that question. But the answer to these two things is the same. What are good questions to get to know someone's true self? How to know if a guy, what a guy wants? It's not in the question. So I've done a lot of surveys on favorite questions. I've asked, I've asked women what their favorite questions are. And it's one of the most important things for men to know about a woman what her favorite questions are. And what I mean by that is what is the question you can ask her that what she gets to talk about after that is a joy to her. It, it's joyful. It's happy making. It accesses her, her passions. Um, how are you is not one of them. I recommend men not ask that unless contextually it's the question. Um, and I've asked men, what are your favorite questions? And I've literally stood in front of like almost 200 people, 40% of them men, and told them about favorite questions for women and then said, so men, what are some of your favorite questions? Because women have been saying all kinds of favorite questions. Like, you know, what trip are you taking next? And what have you learned lately? And how are your grandchildren? And what are you doing with your garden this spring? And, you know, there's all these questions that women love. What are you reading? <laughs> what are you excited about? And then I asked the men, what are some of your favorite questions? And no hands went up. And I, I'm like waiting, waiting for a hand to go up. No hands go up. The men think, they think about their answers. And so I, I was prepared to wait, but still no hands came up. And then after a while, men started going like this. <laughs> it's like, what? Their favorite questions are no questions. <laughs> questions to them too often are presented as if we're entitled to the answer. They owe us the answer to that. That makes it an interrogation. They don't like interrogations. So does that mean you have to go without learning what you need to learn about them? Mm -mm. We actually call it listening to learn. We teach it in Understanding Men, we teach it in LUX, which stands for Liberation, Understanding, and Extraordinary Relationships. It's called Listening to Learn, and I'll just tell you right now what to do. No matter what someone's talking about, of any age, by the way, you can practice this on men, women, children, any age, no matter what they're talking about, if the question you have at the top of your mind, and you'll have to do this consciously because there's one there already that usually, I, yeah, it makes a mess of everything. If you put the question at the top of your, your mind, hmm, what matters to them? What matters to them? What matters to them? It's like a treasure hunt for your brain. Or hmm, what's important to them? What's important to them? Or what do they care about? What do they care about? And there's another version that's on another level. It's spectacular, but I'd start with what matters to them. What do they care about? What's important to them? But if, if you want to, you can listen with the question, what's true for them? What's true for them? That's going to get into all kinds of interesting things. So that's another reason I recommend what matters, what do they care about, what's important to them. And you're you put your brain on a treasure hunt. And I'm not kidding. Dan was talking about golf today and how he was being teased by these two 18-year-olds newly graduated from high school whippersnappers. And as I listened to what was important to him, Right? What really mattered to him, everything he was saying, how they kept score, and then he got teased for losing. 
What mattered to him was that they had fun, that they love golf, that they're, that they're getting more skillful, that they're enjoying it, that they were all together. That's what matters to him. He, he paid to get teased. <laughs> he paid a lot of money today to get teased by these, these young men. And he'll do it again. <laughs> next week and the next week and every chance he gets. So whatever they're talking about, they could be talking about golf, fishing, college, their job, you know, why they're worried about their sister. They can talk about anything. If you're listening to learn, you'll find out about their true self. Who is this person? What do they value? What do they care about? That's what their actions are based on. That's what their decisions are based on. So it's not the questions you ask. And, you know, we've learned some great questions over the years. Um, in understanding men, I think it's after, I don't know, it's after actually the panel of men. We, we teach you how to ask questions, how to word them, because you don't want to stump somebody. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll give you an example. In the beginning, we asked, like, what are, someone asked, what are your three favorite things about women? And the man who chose that question, which is very important that they get to choose, right? So like if you're going to decide to make dating apps work for you, you know, I'd be honored to hear about any of these three things. Then they get to pick, right? So, so this man was like, okay, what are my three favorite things about women? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I'll like it out. Oh, but then there's this. And so he was counting up all his favorite things about women and then trying to figure out which were the three favorites. And I realized we want to know all of them. <laughs> Tell us all of them. We're in a drought. We have no idea what men love about us. Tell us all of them. But we'd worded the question, what are your three favorite things? And they took the question seriously because that's how men are. They take things seriously. He committed to this question, three favorite things. And so by golly, he was going to figure it out. We never let a question like that into the stack again. We just would say, what are your favorite things about women? And then all the men on the panel end up in this whole conversation about their favorite things about women. Oh yeah, there's that, and there's that, and then that. And we're like, oh my gosh, is raining appreciation, is raining admiration, is raining love. It's, we had to reword the question. So in understanding men, we have how to word questions, how not to word questions. And then we have a list of 101 great questions that are like playgrounds for men to express themselves. And we also teach you how to listen. Because <laughs> if you listen, they'll talk. If you don't listen, the only men who will talk are the ones who don't care if you're listening. <laughs> That's not good. The ones who care if you're listening will stop talking. So we actually have to keep listening if we want them to keep talking. And if you're listening to learn, you're going to end up richer for it. So I knew, I talk about this in Owner Ultimatums. I already knew where Dan's ultimatums would reside without him ever telling me what his ultimatums were. But I'd been listening to learn and I knew it was important to him. And so it, it wasn't a far stretch to know where he was gonna have deal breaks.